Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India initiates demolition of buildings in sinking Himalayan town. Massive protests erupt in Gilgit, Baltistan over imposition of unfair taxes. And Nepal's Prime Minister Dehel wins vote of confidence in Parliament. And now for all the details. Authorities in Joshimat in India's northern Uttarakhand state on Tuesday initiated the demolition of buildings in the sinking town that have developed cracks due to the shifting soil. Residents of the town were seen tearing up as they bid a painful goodbye to their houses while staring at an uncertain future. Authorities in Joshi Mutt in India's northern Uttarakhand state on Tuesday initiated the demolition of buildings in the sinking town that have developed cracks due to shifting soil. Residents of the town were seen tearing up as they bid a painful goodbye to their houses while staring at an uncertain future. Reports suggest that nearly 700 houses in the town have developed cracks and some 400 people have been moved to safer locations. Authorities have divided affected areas into danger, buffer and safe zones based on the intensity of the impact and the urgency with which they should be vacated. موسیقی तो उधर से हम ऑनलोडिंग करेंगे हर फ्लोर का ताकि इस तरफ लोड बना रहे और बिल्डिंग तपल ना लोकल्स इन जोशी मठ ऑन ट्यूजडे प्रोटेस्टेड अगेंस्ट नेशनल थर्मल पावर कॉर्पोरेशन एन ओवर तपोवन विष्णुगढ़ हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक प्रोजेक्ट व्हिच वाज बीइंग कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन द एरिया द कंस्ट्रक्शन हैज बीन स्टॉप्ड विद इमीडिएट इफेक्ट टिल फर्दर ऑर्डर्स होम टू अ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ अराउंड 25000 पीपल जोशी मठ इज फेसिंग कंसर्न्स ओवर लैंड सब्सिडेंस after what has been said to be years of untrammeled development in the area. An overnight halt for those visiting the shrines in Badrinath and Hemkund Sahib and other tourist destinations, the town has been burdened by too many hotels and resorts. Pollution levels and dropping temperatures in India's capital New Delhi have made it difficult for early workers to step out in the morning for their exercises, as only some of them were seen venturing out on Tuesday. The air quality index in the city was recorded at 311, which is considered very poor. Dropping temperatures and high pollution levels in India's capital, New Delhi, have made it difficult for early walkers to step out and exercise, as only a few of them were seen venturing out on Tuesday amid severe air quality. Residents of the city are already reeling under an intense cold wave and taking precautions to protect themselves from the cold, even as the city saw a drop in the air quality as well. Some people still went to parks and gardens for walks even as smog hovered over the city. We have to take precautions. We have to take the cold from the cold. तो इसलिए वैसे भी पेपर में यही दिया है अब असल में तो निकलना नहीं चाहिए पेपर तो ये कहता है और अगर इन यानी केस निकलते भी हैं तो पूरा अपना अरेंजमेंट करके निकलो 
जैसे हमने दस्ताने पहन रखे हैं कैप पहन रखा है और वैसे इनर पहन रखे हैं और भी गर्म कपड़े पहन रखे हैं द सिस्टम ऑफ एयर क्वालिटी एंड वेदर फोरकास्टिंग एंड रिसर्च सफर सेट द एयर क्वालिटी रीडिंग वॉज एट थ्री वन वन दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट ऑन मंडे इशूड एन ऑर्डर टू बैन फ्लाइंग ऑफ बी एस थ्री पेट्रोल एंड बी एस फोर डीजल लाइट मोटर व्हीकल्स विद इमीडिएट इफेक्ट टिल जनवरी ट्वेल्व और टिल द पॉल्यूशन लेवल कम्स डाउन Authorities have brought in several measures over the years to improve Delhi's air quality and to control the burning of firewood and waste during cold weather. But experts have said these measures need to be applied across cities and towns around New Delhi that form the wider national capital region to effectively control pollution. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Monday asked the IMF for a breathing space over their demand for the release of financial aid. citing the catastrophic floods last year addressing the media sharif said while pakistan is trying to comply with the imf conditions he cannot impose additional burdens on the country's poorest pakistan's prime minister shahbaz sharif on monday asked the international monetary fund imf for a breathing space over their demand for the release of financial aid citing the catastrophic 2022 floods in the country Shahbaz who was addressing the media post the UN Pakistan summit said the global lender wants Pakistan to withdraw subsidies given by his government aimed at helping the masses even before these floods hit Pakistan we were facing humongous challenges PM Sharif added he said while Pakistan is trying to comply with the IMF conditions he cannot impose additional burdens on the country's poorest Pakistan's finance minister Ishaq Dar on the sidelines of the UN donor summit held a meeting with the IMF mission chief to Pakistan Nathan Potter in a statement the finance ministry reiterated the commitment to complete the fund program yet we are committed to IMF's program we will do everything to uh, comply with their terms and conditions although i am i am constantly trying to persuade them that please give us a pause In the donor summit over 9 billion US dollars were committed by international donors to help Pakistan recover from the devastating floods last September. Among the donors were the Islamic Development Bank, World Bank, the US, EU, Saudi Arabia and France. The floods blamed on climate change dealt a severe blow to Pakistan's already strained economy while displacing some 8 million people and killing at least 1700. Moving on Massive protests erupted recently in Gilgit Baltistan over the imposition of new taxes amid the ongoing economic crisis. The protesters said Pakistan government is imposing unjust taxes on the people in the occupied region without granting any fundamental rights to them. Massive protests have erupted across Gilgit Baltistan over the imposition of unfair taxes by the Pakistani government amid the ongoing economic woes. In a certain protest in Skardu recently led by traders and locals the protesters said the Pakistan government is imposing taxes under various names without granting any fundamental rights to the people of the region they said it is unjust to impose taxes in the disputed region which is already marginalized and has been facing brunt of rising inflation they also voiced concern over prolonged power cuts illegal land grabbing and other issues locals blame pakistan has misruled the region for more than 7 decades and they are not even consulted when the government brings about any legislation they say there is a stooge government in the region but it only helps islamabad fill its treasuries through economic depredations The Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council Jan Eaglund met with Taliban leaders on Monday and said that they cannot and will not work in Afghanistan without female staff. He said that they plan to assist 700,000 Afghans in 2023 but can only resume work when the ban on female colleagues is lifted. The Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council Jan Eaglund met with Islamic Emirates officials on Monday 
and said that without female staff, they cannot work and will not work in Afghanistan. Iglet said on Twitter that he met with the Taliban leaders and they are trying to find a way to get out of the current ban on female workers, which is paralyzing all humanitarian work in Afghanistan. He added that they planned to assist 700,000 Afghans in 2023 but can only resume work when the ban on female colleagues is lifted. The recent ban on female aid workers and higher education for women in Afghanistan has drawn widespread condemnation from across the globe. Since seizing control in August 2021, the Islamic Taliban has imposed hardline policies, including that women must cover their faces in public and should not leave home without a male relative if they travel more than 45 miles. Western governments have said that the group needs to reverse its course on women's rights for any parts towards formal recognition. In news from Nepal. Nepal's newly appointed Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel won the vote of confidence in the parliament on Tuesday with a record majority. Dehel, the chairman of CPN Mayoist Centre, became the Prime Minister on December 26 after securing support of seven parties. There is a constitutional provision that the new Premier has to take a vote of confidence within one month of taking office. Dehel secured 268 votes in his favour as only 270 members were present in the 275-member House of Representatives. He is now expected to expand his eight-member cabinet. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's power minister has informed the cabinet on Monday approved new electricity tariffs to reflect the cost of coal and power generation to take effect this month without saying how much higher they would be. A proposal of further 25% hike had earlier sparked widespread criticism from opposition parties over concerns it would severely impact the poor. Sri Lanka's cabinet on Monday approved new electricity tariffs to reflect the cost of coal and power generation. To take effect this month, Power Minister Kanchana Vijasekra said, without saying how much higher they would be. Sri Lanka raised electricity tariffs by 75% last August and a cabinet proposal to raise them by a further 25% had been under consideration on Monday. The island nation is struggling under its worst financial crisis in seven decades and has to put its massively indebted public finances in order to unlock a 2.9 billion US dollars IMF loan that was agreed in September. The 25% proposal had earlier sparked widespread criticism from opposition parties unions and Sri Lanka's power regulator over concerns it would severely impact the poor. Janaka Ratnaike, chairman of Power Regulator and Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka, said the cabinet's decision was accepted, taking into consideration coal costs and expenses to operate hydropower plants. He also did not say how much higher they would be. Sri Lanka has a state-run power monopoly, the Ceylon Electricity Board, which has incurred massive losses. The government has committed to increasing power prices to reduce losses and put public finances on a sounder footing. In the wake of recent targeted civilian killings in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the country's paramilitary force, CRPF, has started giving arms training to village defence guards in the Union Territory. The force has also increased deployment of troops in the region to keep a check on the security situation. In the wake of the recent terror attack in Rajori district of India's Jammu and Kashmir, the country's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force CRPF has started giving weapon training to village defence committee guards in the Union Territory. The training is aimed to make the VDC guards able to safeguard the villages as first responders in case of any terrorist attack. The training will help them secure several families and fill them with a sense of security, a CRPF official said. The Jammu and Kashmir administration has recently started reissuing weapons to VDC guards after demands were raised by residents following the attack in Rajori, in which at least four civilians were shot dead by terrorists. So, now we have seen the latest incident in our country. In the past, we have not been given a posting in the past. And we have also given the task that the VDC members, the village and the community members, we can train them so that if we have to take care of them, we can also take care of them in the past. So, we can also take care of them in the past. So, you will see that our instructors are doing good training, they 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 are doing good training, 
ताकि आवश्यकता पड़ती है तो ये भी फायर का जवाब फायर से दे सकते हैं मीन वाइल दी सी आर पी एफ एज रिपोर्टेडली डिप्लॉयड अराउंड एटीन हंड्रेड एडिशनल ट्रूप्स इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर फॉलोइंग दी किलिंग इन रजौरी दी पैरामिलिट्री फोर्स हैज प्लेड अ की रोल इन सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द रीजन एंड हैड न्यूट्रलाइज वन थर्टी फाइव टेररिस इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू India has long accused terrorists are trained and supported by Pakistan to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. However, Islamabad denies the charge saying it only supports people of Kashmir diplomatically. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at @sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.